It's time for Comedy Central Live at the Savannah Virtual Comedy Bar. Every sip counts to help Savannah fund the fun. Hi, the name is Dewey, Mugani Dewey, licensed to be this handsome. I'll be your virtual bartender for the evening, and I am not shaken, and you will be stirred. Tonight, I'll be serving you some of the finest virtual liquor that cryptocurrency can buy. And now, for some comedy. I spy, with my little eye, Telegram. What's up with that? Okay. Special announcements. Do you suffer from the following symptoms? Dizziness, headaches, irritability, sleepless nights, difficulty in expressing your feelings? Well, my friend, this is not coronavirus. This is poverty at its finest. Also known as Povert 19. The only cure is hard work. And now to vaccinate your boredom, it's the comedic stylings of the wonderful, the beautiful Nina Hasty, everybody. December, many years ago, in a time before the virus, when we were still thriving and surviving, you know? Remember when December was still spelt with a Z? You know? When December had a soundtrack, when Umunye was still on top of Umunye. Okay, listen. I took some surfing lessons. Why? Do you ask? Do I, at 35, Hey, that's my soccer age, okay, but anyway, but why at that age do I take on surfing lessons? I mean, okay, it makes no sense, particularly for somebody who lives in Johannesburg, all right? Well, let me tell you, okay, how approaching middle age as a single woman works after you've bought a convertible, a flat in Santon, and have had enough Botox injected into your face and neck to numb your daddy issues. <laughs> You run out of shit to get you going, okay? And, and I mean, also, like, have you met me? You know, it's, it's hard having a bigger dick than every man you meet. Meet. <laughs> so yes, surfing, right? Okay, so, so you fucking drive to Durban in your convertible and, and you book a surfing lesson with some barefoot guy named Brad or Bryce or Brent or whatever. You know, it's surfing, man. It's a lot of fun but it's dangerous, okay? And trust me, it looks nothing like the pictures. In the pictures, the ocean looks regal and azure. In Durban, it looks like it's where the wasted lives of many Belindas and Brads have been flushed and the sad, frothy scum laps onto the shore as a constant reminder of their wasted youths. You know those guys in the tubes, like on the gram, and the chicks in the bikinis on the cover of Roxy magazine? That's a far cry from Nina in a short leg wetsuit with a bright yellow learner surfer shirt over it, okay? Like, you know when you're driving in Randburg, close to the testing center, and you're stuck behind a 17-year-old in a 2003 hatchback Mazda with a big L on it? That's me, but in the ocean, all right? Like, it's one of those activities where you're either having the best time of your life or you're literally Dying, okay? Mother Nature will show you instant karma in the ocean. Thanks, Brent. Less with the chakras, more with the six packs, okay? I remember some top tips from a surfing comedian friend of mine, Nick Rabinovitz, okay? He once told me, there's some rules you need to know, okay? About the ocean. First, you never face your back to the ocean. Then, he says, there are two ways to go through a wave, over or under. You know how sometimes they say the only way is through? That's strictly for breakups. When it comes to waves, over or under. But he's Cape Tonian, and you can't take anything those people say seriously. I mean, two words, Musenberg, Fishhook. 
ocean. So what I did is I go under the wave, right? But with my back to the ocean. Because nobody tells me what to do. The only thing that gets under me is your estimation, motherfucker. Also, there's this other dude who also dived under the wave and like into my face with his head. He knocks me out, all right? My face is bleeding, I'm dizzy. Waves are just crashing at me, like left and right. And I like eventually make it out of the water and try to find a lifeguard. I'm pretty sure you should never be searching for a lifeguard. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to find you. But I mean, this is Durban, right? People are very relaxed. I mean, I don't know, I don't know where Brad went. And maybe he went to go check his fax machine for messages. You know, it's, it's Durban, it has its own time zone. It's 1983, you know? Uh, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, in Pretoria, it's 1976, and, and in Cape Town, it's 1642. Anyway, the, the energy in Durban is like, you know, when you, you know when you have a project due in six months, like, you know you have to do it, but you'll get into it, like after, I don't know, you've had a baby. I, I, look, nobody panic, no sudden movements, that's Durban. It's, it's not that the system's offline, it's just that no one really plugged it in. Anyway, back to the story, okay? So I've been smashed in the face by an oceanic passerby. I'm in need of medical attention. My perfectly carved face has just been smushed and I'm bleeding profusely from the mouth. I get out of the water to look for a lifeguard. I search. I went right up to someone in a red shirt and it was just a very confused promo girl from Vodacom. Would you like to change your daughter? Anyways, I'm out of the water. I get back into the ocean looking for the lifeguard. Like, what kind of low-budget production is this that I have to get back into the water to find a lifeguard? Then, oh, then. You know what happens is, this is something no one tells you about. Fucking blue bottles, okay? Guys, I'm beside myself, all right? Not only about the blue bottles or floating terrors, or I prefer their more accurate name, Portuguese man of war, right? Nah, I mean, I have nothing against the Portuguese, you know, except for that little colonization thing and Catholicism and the Spanish Inquisition. Okay, that was the Spanish, but they were right next door. And guilty by association, if you ask me. Right? Anyway, so here's what trips me up. I enter the water and this blue bottle stings me. Okay, I'm in anaphylactic shock. I can't breathe. My legs are burning like the third day of CrossFit, right? I mean, I'm, I, I scream to Brent. Brent, pee on my leg, pee on my leg. And, and as he starts peeing on my leg, I hear this strange sound like urine hitting plastic, which is a weird sound to identify so specifically. But that's when I realized it wasn't a blue bottle. It was a fucking checkers back, all right? And then I look up at this guy and I'm like, why the fuck are you peeing on me? He's like, but you asked me to. And I said, I thought it was a fucking blue bottle. I get over myself, right? And I try and think about the things I can apply to this already mortifying situation. I get out of the water again, face dripping with blood, tears and regret, you know, searching for help. Anyway, I, I get to the lifeguard hut eventually. Now inside, people whose job it is to be alert, right? In order to keep people from hurting themselves are just sitting there calmly playing fucking Candy Crush or whatever. I don't know, it's Durban, right? I, I have to like knock on the window and show them that my face is bleeding. This guy comes out and he looks at me and he's like, shit eh, your face is bleeding. I'm like, I know bro, that's literally why I'm here. He's like, yo shit eh, you should do something about that. Like maybe you should get some ice, eh? I look around, uh, not a fucking guy that sells grenadilla ice lollies inside. Where the fuck is the grenadilla ice lolly guy when you need him? You know, nothing but that Durban humidity and hopelessness. Anyway, I'm, I'm staring at him and, and I'm like, yes, guy, that's, that's literally what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm so frustrated at this point. I start crying. I'm like ugly crying. I'm here. I'm like, <laughs> and he looks at me and, and in his attempt to shift responsibility, because nobody takes responsibility in Durban uh, and, and and he says shame man where's your parents I'm a 35 year old woman and with all my self-respect I just stared at him and I said <laughs> they're not here <laughs> thank you very much Anson thank you Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They love me. They love me. They love, they really. 
as an African 007. I'm always on a search for my latest Bond girl. When I approached the next lady requesting her to become one, she said, sure, you can pay my Bond. The unmatched, unemployed, Farida. So we, 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 are, we are getting nearer and nearer to a season where things are dry. Talking pockets, talking the air, talking hair. But most importantly, it's like your skin. They say it's an organism. And as an organism, it need to have moisture. You get? So, really, I just want to bring attention to the fact that some things need to be cared for. One of those important things that kills you every day, breathing with you, is your skin. It, don't treat it like your, your feet. Treat it like its own guy. It needs attention. So what I would like to suggest is that maybe sometimes we can like have self-care Saturday, Sunday, self-care weekend. You know, where you get yourself the gloves that will clean the skin, make it smooth and creamy, like mashed potatoes on a Sunday afternoon, seven colors. Don't neglect your hands when you do the tassa. When you moisturize the face, the neck, the arms, elbows, knees, heels. So help yourself, help others. Let's be aware and take care of our skins. Please, thanks and good night. Don't you just hate it when you're on a top secret mission? Huh? You look around the room and realize you're the only black guy in the room, so you decide to start serving drinks not to blow your cover. Or worse, you're on a secret mission and one of your cousins recognizes you. Hey, what's up, Kazu? And you're like, hey, oh, oh, I'm on a top secret mission. What do you mean you owe me money? Anyway, next up, my stunt double, Les Gola. You shouldn't have. You probably didn't back home. Um, I'm here to tell a story about my life, the chronicles of me. Basically, I've moved to Cape Town recently, and um, it's great. You know, there's ocean, there's nature. It's great. Um, but every now and again, I know some people can attest to this. Every, every now and again, I feel, it's like it's not a lot, but I feel, like racism breeze. Like, I don't know, you know, I don't know where it's coming from, but you just like, someone left a racism window open, or, you know, it's it's not overt. And I was speaking to a friend of mine, because I was like, are you not feeling, are you not feeling what I'm feeling? Is this breeze affecting you? And he's like, yeah, I mean, look, I know. Cape Town, yeah, Cape Town's fucked, man. Um, but I'm here, I'm here, for, I'm, like, it's the nature. I would move to Joburg. I know it's a first world city, it's an African city, but, but the lifestyle here, the nature, the nature and the lifestyle, the nature. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, you can't have nature and have a first world city. You can't have nature and an African city. Like, they're not mutually exclusive. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like I'm walking down the beautiful beach one day, you know, just walking, sunset, it's nature, and it's just beautiful. You see a shell, you're like, oh. Nature. Nature, man. Put the shell to the ear. Nature. Did this shell just call me the K-word? <laughs> you know, like, that's not how it works. African city and nature are not mutually exclusive. You know what I mean? Like, they can both exist. Joburg is literally a forest. It's literally a forest. And Zagumi, I mean, you can't get more Joburg than, like, Zagumi stays in a back room in deep blue. I saw Zagumi sell airtime at Bree Street, okay? Things happened after the World Cup. That money has dried up. 
tiger's got to eat or a lion. I don't know what the fuck. What was that going Anyways, I um, I did have an overt incident in Cape Town. Um, it was in a bar just off, just a bar off Clue Street, right? It was a bar off Clue Street, and how do I say this? I had an altercation with a gentleman of a lighter hue. Um, a gentleman with melanin deficiency, if you if you know what I mean. Um, SPF boys, if you know what I mean, the SPF gang gang. And um, in the in the altercation, this gentleman called me a monkey. It was like a me it was like a freak out. It was like bouncers were involved, and every it was just it was chaos, right? I eventually got thrown out because you know obviously punches were almost thrown. I'm not that agile. But anyway, at the end of the day, it's like I did like a little rant on Twitter, you know. I did a rant on Twitter and Facebook, but like they linked. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rant twice. You know, I'm, I'm angry, but I'm lazy. You know what I mean? And also the more times I rant, like by the time I get to Instagram, I'm like, yeah, something kind of happened. You know what I mean? So I want to be angry, do it once, and let's get it out there. Anyways, I went to sleep. The next day, I woke up and it had a little bit of traction, right? A couple of shares, likes. News 24 had written an article about it. The Citizen had written an article about it. The Voice? The Voice wrote an article about it, but, um, yeah, the headline was like, Monkey gets fucked by Togoloshi while others watch. I'm like, what? That is not, that is not what happened at all. But yeah, get your, get your clickbaits, boo. But the interesting thing about the News 24 article was that they interviewed the guy. Like, they found the guy and they interviewed him. And quick side note, do you know how they found the guy and interviewed him? Because he worked for News 24. Um, so yeah, that's like the, the easiest investigative journalism in the world. It's like, fuck, where can we find... Uh, we need to find this guy. Ground floor. You know what I mean? Like, we got him! Anyways, they interviewed him and they asked him, do you consider yourself a racist? And he said, no. Which is even crazier for me. Because that means... That means he can't tell... Like... That means he thinks, like, Lion King is a documentary. And, like, he was just chilling at the bar and a monkey walked into the bar and bought beers for his human friends. The monkey used a check card. This means this monkey had fika. It, this means this monkey had a proof of residence and an ID. And as this monkey was paying, the barman was like, would you, would you like to tap? And the monkey was like, don't trust the system. <laughs> so, of, you know, of course it's racist. It's part of the Cliff Klux Klan. But um, it was crazy. Everyone was telling me, like, you got to take them to the human rights court. you got to take them to the police station. you got to take them to the constitutional court. I'm like, I don't even take my dishes to the sink, right? Like, how, how am I, like, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do this. I, look, I hate racism, but the worst kind of racism is the racism that leaves you with errands. You know, I'm just like, fuck. I'm just, dude, let me just, let me just live my life. Like, I'm the victim here. Why am I, you know what I mean? Like, I must take my leave days to go and fucking report him. Like, I'm gonna affect my Durban December for you, like, not it. Like, if the only way they could get more convictions is if maybe we got racism leave days, you know? Black people got racism leave days, there'll be way more convictions. You go through the roof. I mean, one person who definitely would get convicted, we haven't spoken a lot about, is the Alsatian, okay? We saw you in apartheid. You, you, you were there. And now you're just living your life, licking your balls on the promenade without a care in the world. We see you, dog. We see you. Anyway, look, knowing me and having racism days, I'd probably take advantage of that thing. You know, I'll be like hungover one day and I'll be like, oh, fuck. Uh, let me use one of my racism leave days. But how do I? Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use a racism leave day. Yeah, I was walking on the beach and, um, yeah, and I picked up a shell. I, and that's the end of my, and cut. <laughs> Cheers.
Being double O African has its challenges. First of all, it's hard for me to go undercover because I'm recognizable in every place I go to. I fit each and every police description. Hey, we're looking for a guy with big nostrils and fat lips. Well, there he is, I'm undercover. Being an undercover spy, playing a barman has even more challenges. As a bartender, people constantly want to be wooed and wowed. I gotta flare bottles like I'm dancing at the red light for some loose change. You know, shake a little ass, make a little cash. And by trade, people assume that I'm just full of good advice and I'm a great listener. Well, advice is like toilet paper. It's only good when you're wiping your ass. Let's say you're walking around with your chin low. You know, you're having a bad day. Time life is a little hard, times are a little difficult. What do people usually say to you? Chin up, champ. It can't be that bad. When one door closes, another one opens. What the? That's the equivalent to saying, when one door opens, another one closes. What do you, work at a bank? No, I'm a real person. You know what, I'm from Limpopo. And we have a saying, when one door closes, and another one opens, well, it's time for us to unpack our things and move, because that's witchcraft. And we don't deal with that no more. The only time that that saying is applicable is when you're a Fiat Uno driver and your passenger walks in and you gotta advise him. Like, listen friend, please don't bang the door because if you do that, my boot's gonna open. Personally, I hate Fiat Unos. Having an alarm installed in your Fiat Uno is wishful thinking. That's like having air conditioned installed in your RDP. Now you have a walk-in fridge. Oh wow, I like your, I like your mattress. It's icy cold. Mm. Keep those togoloshes away. Fiat Uno is like a scooter with two extra wheels. You need a helmet. What are you, delivering pizzas? Fiat Uno drivers are the only people that are more religious than Kaiser Chief supporters. Because when you are driving on the highway and you see a truck coming towards you, you start praying because you know what's going to happen. As soon as that truck drives by, now we're driving home. Fiat Uno, you can kiss my ass. Anyway. I'm off to go sell some Bitcoin and teach online English. Thanks. Love you. Bye. It's water. What the fuck?